Now let's come to question number 15. Question 15, simple question. Simply based on conversion of galvanometer to emitters and voltmeters. All of us understand <coughs> that galvanometer uh, is represented by a symbol like this, G. And this is the current which goes into the galvanometer which causes the deflection of galvanometer and the resistance of galvanometer is as well represented by the symbol G. And then I can convert this galvanometer into an emitter if I apply, if I uh, use a resistance uh, in parallel to it and I can convert this galvanometer into a voltmeter if I use a resistance in series to it. Now question says the galvanometer gives full scale deflection uh, with 0 0.006 ampere current. So full scale deflection of galvanometer is denoted by IG because of which the scale would be deflected completely. So IG value question says is 0 0.006 ampere. Then he says by connecting it to 4990 ohm resistance it can be converted into voltmeter. So he is converting this galvanometer into voltmeter by connecting a high resistance in series. Let us say uh, 4990, 4990 ohm resistance in series. Now this complete entity <coughs> is called as voltmeter. And the voltage this entity measures is nothing but the current that is getting get, get that, that is passing multiplied by the net resistance. So he says that it can be converted into voltmeter of 0 to 30 volt range. Hence 30 volt would be the reading when the current causes full scale deflection in the galvanometer and the full scale deflection current is 0 0.06 ampere, 0 0.006 ampere. Hence I am getting an equation Ig which is 0 0.006 multiplied by G plus 4990 gives me 30 volts. Value of Ig is known to me 0 0.006 if I substitute. I will get G plus 4990 would be 30 divided by 0 0.006, 0 0.006, which gives me 5000, 5000. Solving, I will get G is equal to 10 ohm. The resistance of the galvanometer is now known to me, it is 10 ohm. Now the second part of the question says, ki, uh, if it is connected to a certain shunt, a certain resistance, then it becomes an emitter of the range 0 to 1.5 ampere. Now I convert, I can convert a galvanometer into an emitter if I if I connect it with a resistance in parallel to it, a low resistance, low resistance, a low shunt value in parallel to it. So the diagram in this case is this. Let us say shunt is S. <coughs> now the current comes and can, then it is divided into two parts. Lesser part, lesser current moves through the galvanometer and gives us a reading. Now he says the, the emitter has a range of 0 to 1.5 ampere which means when 1.5 ampere current is coming the galvanometer that, that this device is showing me full scale deflection that means the current that is passing through the galvanometer is Ig which is 0 0.006 hence by Kirchhoff law remaining current that means 1.5 minus of Ig passes through the shunt and because both of them are connected in parallel hence potential difference across this and across this must be equal to each other. I so will get a simple equation. Ig that means 0.006 into the resistance of galvanometer which is 10 ohm is equal to current which is passing through the shunt which is 1.5 1.5 minus of Ig which is 0 0.006 into the shunt value into the shunt value S. If I solve this equation I will get the shunt value S as 0 0.006 into 10 divided by 1.5 minus of 0 0.006, 1.5 minus of 0 0.006 gives me 1.494. <coughs> this is further equal to, so this 0 and this 0 gets eliminated, I am getting it as 60 divided by 1494, Cancel, cancelling it out, then 3, comes out to be 10 divided by 249. Now question says the resistance is 2n upon 249. The question says that the resistance when it is getting converted into an emitter is 2n upon 249 and we are getting resistance as 10 upon 249. It is 10 divided by 249. If I compare both of them, I will get 10 is equal to 5. Hence the answer comes out to be n is equal to 5. N is equal to 5. So we will now solve question number 17. Question number 17 says there is a circular platform whose radius r is given as 0.5 meter and there are two guns situated at 0.25 meter from the center we have named it as small r. So initially whole system was at rest then steel balls are fired from these two guns with a velocity of 9 meter per second in opposite direction. What we have to find is omega of this circular platform 
when these are fired so as we can see there is no external torque so angular momentum of the system will be conserved initially the system was at rest so final angular momentum will also be zero so let's write final angular momentum we will have three terms in angular momentum two of the steel balls and one of circular table angular momentum this particular steel ball is m v r and that to in clockwise sense the of this ball is also m v r and that to in clockwise sense so we have taken clockwise sense as positive now of table would be i omega which is in anti clockwise sense and i of this disk is m r square by 2 so we will have minus m r square by 2 omega and that will be equal to initial angular momentum which was zero putting the values where v is equal to 9 meter per second we will get omega is equal to 4 radian per second so our answer would be 4 because what we what is being asked is omega in radian per second question number 18 on a uniform circular disk three forces x y z are acting all three are of equal magnitude 0.5 newton all three are of equal magnitude 0.5 newton this disk is of mass 1.5 kg and its radius is 0.5 meter it is at rest at t equal to 0 now what we have to calculate is one second after these forces are being applied what is angular velocity of this disk so we see these three forces are producing torque on this disk so let's calculate torque of the force acting at point z so torque will be f into r perpendicular where r perpendicular is distance as shown in the figure now if this is this is making equilateral triangle so this angle would be 30 degree so the value of r perpendicular would be r perpendicular is equal to 0.5 sin 30 that is equal to 0.25 meter now angular impulse on this body is equal to change in angular momentum angular impulse is equal to torque into time that is equal to change in angular momentum so final angular momentum will be represented by i omega final minus initial angular momentum i omega initial now as there are three forces and each force is acting in such a fashion that torque about point o would be same so the net torque on the body so the net torque on the body will be three times of the torque which we calculated due to force at z so the net torque would be three times force which is 0.5 newton into r perpendicular which is 0.25 meter so this is torque and the time is 1 second is equal to i omega final minus omega initial now the system was at rest at t equal to 0 so omega initial is 0 so this is equal to i moment of inertia of this whole body uniform disk is m r square by 2 into omega final minus omega initial is 0 putting m is equal to mass of the disk that is 1.5 kg and radius r is equal to 0.5 meter we will get omega final is equal to 2 radian per second so our answer would be 2 so the answer to the question number 18 is 2